Welcome back everyone, Jose Turno and Crisis here and today it is about to be the year 2003 and it's right. We are about to play Grand Prix World 2001, we're about to enter the 2003 season and it was an excellent year for Frost that began really, really terribly. Let me, let, let, let's do a little review of all the, of, of everything that happened. The first few races were terrible. 12th and a DNF by Bernoldi. The car was definitely not good. Then we go to Brazil and it's the same thing. Like 10th and Alonso DNF because he got set on fire. I actually forgot that. That he he got lit on fire. But yeah, Bernoldi. At least he finished. Then we go to Argentina. The Michael wins. You remember this, when you had different teams winning races and then it was just Ferrari, Ferrari, Fer well, McLaren, Ferrari, 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 and so on and so forth. But anyway, Argentina, 13th, not quite last of the qualifying runners, but we weren't good. Then San Marino, 10th, Alin, and 11th, it was decent. Spain, we brought not great, but it, it didn't quite work. Then Monaco, 8 and 9, we were getting there. This one, okay, this is, this is a DC one, there, he's there. Uh, Canada, uh, not that great. France, double DNF. Britain, points. Austria, podium. Uh, at this point, the car was working really well. Germany, outside the points, sadly. Uh, Hungary, brake issues. Belgium, double DNF. But after that, Italy, podium. Luxembourg, podium. Japanese Grand Prix, one, two, finish. So yeah, we really built up right after the British Grand Prix, which is where we brought, well, no, it was for France that we brought that upgrade, but it didn't quite work out because, well, we dnf and France is like absurdly difficult in general for, for us. So yeah, that's how we got third, which is not what we should have gotten, we should have gotten fourth, but William Sauber and Benetton a completely blew this championship. Ferrari is in complete control. McLaren cruising to second best. Uh, uh, well, Coulthard put up, put up a good fight, but it, it just wasn't meant to be. The Ferraris were just too good. Michael also was too good. Nearly 20 points clear of his teammate, who failed to score quite a few times. I'm afraid. Yeah, let's let let's see how many times Physical failed to score. Um, here, for example, although I think both Ferraris had, yeah, uh, physical had an issue there, so not his fault. Not his fault, uh, his scores, but but sixth. And on the best car, like Argentina, he should have been second. Instead, it was a lazy, although I think it rained. I'm pretty sure it rained in this race. But uh, San Marino, sixth. Okay, he finished second in, in, in Spain and Monaco. In Monaco, I think the Michael DNF. Yeah, he DNF'd. He DNF then he wins Canada and France. He finishes second in Britain. He's nowhere in Austria. Remember, it rained there and he was nowhere. Germany he wins because the Michael DNF. Uh, third in Hungary. Sixth in Belgium. He wins Italy. And then he's nowhere in Luxembourg and he's nowhere in Japan. To the point he's even outside the top 10, like, I mean, Jesus Christ. So, what we're doing right now is, of course, beginning the 2003 season. So let's begin. Of course, the champion was the Michael, with the Constructor Champion being Ferrari. Third in the Constructor Championship for us, Prost. Sixth for Alonso and eighth for Bernoldi. This is indeed a fantastic result for Prost. You have climbed up another hard won place in the top four. Now is the time to mount a serious bid for the championship. I'm not sure. I don't think so. But we're gonna try anyway. I always hate when this thing like lags a bit because it's it's thinking, it's updating uh, driver stats and stuff. There we go. I am not here. I'm not in this ranking just yet. This one are with like multi years in, in multi years. Yeah, this is just year three. Into 2003 we go. 
All right, 2003. So, the news. Mika Hagenen has retired, and it looks like no one will retire this year. There's that. Bernoldi's better overtaking, and Alonso as well. And Alonso is a better wet weather driver. That's exactly what we needed. We're going to dominate Luxembourg and Japan again. And let's save this so I don't accidentally reload or something. Uh, the CAT system, the workshop, and the test rig are ready. And we will be getting 11.5 million funds this year, which is excellent. Okay, first order of business is... Uh, this is the build-up, not the episode where I will be doing actual stuff. In the next episode, I will be extending contract offers to the drivers that I want. Uh, uh, of course, I need to check who are the free agents. One of them, of course, will be... Uh, Panis. And... I know I wanted only French drivers, so Bordeaux probably. But Alonso is looking actually decent. Two points in wet weather is... Uh, he'll be fine. But three points in speed, two in skill, and three in overtaking? It's actually pretty damn good. Bernoldi not so much, but I mean... Also, Alonso's morale is at five. When did that happen? Bernoldi's is at two. And the mechanics is at two. I mean, that's... It could be worse. It was worse a while ago. But anyway. Let's begin looking at the driver lines. First arrows, it's still Ralph Schumacher and uh, Heinz Harold Frentzen. Both are free agents. And I need to see who has openings to see who could resign them. Sonte is still around, is, is, is here. Then BAR has Montoya and Saracen. Okay, they have Saracen, which I'm not a fan of. Because I could have used him as a French. French driver, but there's that. Massa is also here. He's he's terrible. Uh, Pedro de la Rosa and Oliver Panis. I definitely need Panis. I'm gonna throw a bunch of money at Panis. He's not that good in terms of speed and skill, but he's good in the complementary ratings. He has decent stamina. He's great at overtaking, and he's average at wet weather. And average is more than good enough. We can't win with an average driver. So uh, Benetton. Also has Marginet as test driver, he's not that good. Physical has been locked up forever, and Michael is still pretty damn good, although he has lost some speed. At this point, Physical is, is Michael Schumacher light, considerably cheaper, I imagine. But Michael wants 25 million, which we are not going to give him, besides he's not French. Also, they have Heidfeld, who is pretty damn good. Uh, Verstappen, who I wanted a while ago, but we couldn't get him because Jaguar signed him. He's excellent in wet weather. If we had him, we would have put like two laps on the field in in Japan, but it wasn't meant to be. They also have Bertie, although I cannot, I cannot sign the guy, and they have Words as test driver. Irvine, Matsakane for Jordan. Irvine is pretty good. Matsakane is not good. And, and Jung as well. No openings in Jordan. I see an opening here in Jaguar, so Jaguar could sign up any of Schumacher and Frensen. Or maybe even Benetton. Benetton is definitely gonna need a driver if I play my cards right. Also Jung is here, Jung is terrible. Uh, McLaren. They have Weber as driver, I need to fix that. This doesn't make any sense. Coolhart will be driver one and Weber will be driver two because look at Weber's ratings. I mean, Jesus Christ. Other is also around. Um, Minardi have Button and Truly locked up for quite a while. They also have Herbert as test driver. Pros, of course, has Alonso, Bernoldi, Bordeaux. I do I think only Bordeaux will be returning and as a test driver. Maybe I sign Alonso to the second seat while Panis goes to the first seat. I'm gonna see if Alonso agrees to that. Uh, sadly, Sauber still has a lazy and it is a long-term deal, so we're not getting that guy. Carson Marquez, he's, he's, he's decent. He's quite skilled, so I cannot trash him. His only bad ratings are overtaking and wet weather. Well, concentration too, but meh. Anthony Davidson, I rate the guy, but he's terrible in this game. Uh, Barrichello, pretty awesome. Raikkonen, not that awesome. He hasn't improved in wet weather. And, you know, there's Jack Villeneuve who is taking in 13 million a year to test drive, which, not bad. 
I could say Thomas Enge, he is not his German. <laughs> or at least that thing says he's Germany. Patrick Lemarie. No, he's Canadian. There's a bunch of just just just, just guys. There's a Komasato, but he's Japanese. There are no no French drivers in the in the free agent market. So the only French drivers available are Bordeaux and Panis. Of course I'm gonna sign Panis. That's that that much is guaranteed. Although he has a high morale rating, that's gonna mean we're gonna need to pay him a ton of cash. But the question is, who do I fit in the second driver seat or test driver seat? If Alonso agrees, I'm gonna try and keep him because, for one, he does allow me to make clickbaity titles. But for another, he's actually decent. Since he got that wet weather point, that means he's gonna be actually decent. Anyway, in the commercial, we're gonna have to sign someone. We need to see the free agents. Of course, uh, free agents' morale is through the sky, and I hope it might say it stays that way. Let's see. So the best commercial managers in the market right now are Dominicali and Ekren Sami. Both of them have fairly low royalty, but I don't want to spend that much cash. I think I'm gonna go for Ring of Jordan, or I could go, or I could go for Gride. Right is more expensive. Ring is cheaper than our boy Fraser. Then the only one that has a commercial manager locked up are BAR and Minardi. Uh, Benetton and Jaguar are gonna struggle a bit finding sponsors. Uh, Arrows and Sauber, maybe not so much. Us, I don't think we're gonna have problems with sponsors at all. But I still need to improve our commercial manager situation. I'm gonna be looking into into Ring. I think that will be in the next episode when I show you which offers I've made. I'm not gonna do anything in, in down there. Sergio Rinland, he served a good job in uh, this season and the previous season. But I think we're going to hire someone else. Or maybe not. Maybe I want to keep my costs low. Or maybe I resign him, because Rob Taylor here, I think he's Rob Taylor, he was fired, I don't know, from Jordan or something? I don't know, he was fired. And his salary is pretty low, which means I could offer him pretty much anything. I will get a level 3 chief designer really quick. Or I could just go for Rory Byrne or Gavin Fisher. But it will take double the amount of cash we're giving Ringland right now. It's just an option to explore. But e pretty much everyone except Jordan have openings, well, except Jordan, Arrows, VAR, and Sauber have openings in the chief designer area. Now, engineering, where is Adrian Nui? Nui is absurdly expensive. The only level 5 one is Ross Braun. Ross Braun, 7 million. World Pros, it's not gonna happen. Patrick Head is also a Stupidly expensive. I'm not gonna get him. It's three million. I could just resign Durant for like a third of what Patrick Head will ask. So it's not gonna happen. Still, I'd rather get a level four at the very least. It's not gonna be Patrick Head. Could be Willy Ramp. We steal him from Ferrari, but it's gonna be like three times more than what we're giving Durant. But he, like our next technical director will build an absolutely amazing 2000 and uh, not 2004 2005 car so if we don't win the championship in 04 we will win it in 05 with the absolutely high quality car the uh, whoever we sign builds and it has to be an absolute monster of a car as well it's probably gonna be really ramp uh new we will be amazing but 4.3 million it's a gigantic price tag. Or we could just resign Duran and uh, play it loose from there. So everyone except Benetton and Sauer are looking, and Minority are looking for a technical director. And mechanics, we definitely need a better mechanic because Gibson did not keep them motivated. The obvious choice here is Whitley, fairly cheap. 
I could go for Mr. Nigel Stepney or Stephen Childs, but too many levels. And I decided that I only want to go one level per per rehire, so I can only go from three to four. So the only option will be Whitley or resigning or our own guy. I'm gonna send a ton of money Whitley's way. I'm gonna call him later, see what what he thinks of our offers. At least the mechanics morale is going up, which we desperately need it. Okay, engineering. First of all, fresh cars. We only have three cars though, so we're gonna fix that. Four cars, so we get some R&D done and some spare parts so we can fix at least one of the cars to 100%. The other will not be done to 100%, sadly, but it's just, it is what it is. Okay, I don't like the fact that the hydraulics have Poor reliability, that's the very first thing we're gonna be working on. We I, we cannot afford poor reliability hydraulics, it's just no. Because we'll then we then will be relying on the engine having a good heat rating. I think it was heat heat rating. And I'd rather not trust the engine that much. At least not 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 yet. Not yet that we cannot modify that stuff. So we invest heavily on hydraulics, maybe we invest heavily on brake reliability. The good thing is that suspension and brake are uh, full, which brakes improves our overtaking and defending performance, while suspension I think improves tire performance, so more grip. But hydraulics we need to improve that, at least to level 3. Same with pretty much everything else. Gearbox, I think we will be fine because I don't use that much acceleration rating and acceleration is what destroys uh, Gearbox. Of course, nothing here, nothing here. We will know the uh, percentage of car handling in a moment. Okay, time to see. Engine. Okay, the Renault engine is everything we could have asked. Very, very fuel efficient. Very heat, uh, uh, dissipates heat, heat very well, which protects our hydraulics as well. Very reliable, excellent response, very, very rigid, and it's okay in terms of weight. The only failing is the power, but we had, last year we had the absolutely horrible Asia Tech. We didn't have any power at all, so low power is not gonna be a, a big concern. Tires, the hard tire, Excellent resilience, mm, grip could have been better, but we can work with that. Very stiff, temperature rating is not that good. The soft tire, they did not improve the soft tire. Jesus Christ, Michelin, why? <laughs> we needed quite a lot more resilience from the soft tire to be able to use it pretty much everywhere, and we don't have that. Grip and stiffness are pretty good, uh, so is uh, temperature, but resilience, terrible. I just hope that mid-season we get an upgraded soft tire, but I doubt this is gonna happen. Intermediate, it's 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 a pretty solid intermediate tire. Wet, it's an excellent wet weather tire. We're gonna see who's winning this tire war in a moment. Here I'm just gonna right away hard the wind tunnel and get that workshop to level two. A, a target, a, an objective for this year is to improve the factory to level three, so we can have. Uh, I guess a cam, oh no, a supercomputer. We need to get a supercomputer. All right, commercial. Here is our, here is the Renault logo. Here's the Lucky Strike. Thank you, Lucky Strike, for sponsoring us, giving us a ton of money. There's the Elf logo. Here's, well, maybe you can find every other logo in the car. There's LG, there's Nortel. Every logo is there. Even if it is very low res, because this is a 1998 game. I think it's 98. We're gonna get, uh, we estimate we're gonna get, this is just straight up division, 2.2 million a race. And support is pretty high, so I'm pretty sure we're gonna get more than that. But we need to work on Lucky Strike so that they give us even more cash money. The bonuses is just, just cheaper engines. It's a bunch of customer deals and the deals and sales are pretty cheap, so not that many bonuses. The thing is, next year we're only gonna get 4.5 million. The reason for that is that the only supplier that we have signed is Elf. And of course we have PSN, Loctite, and General Electric. 
We need to resign people. We need to resign um, team, engine, tires, and three cash sponsors, which is not going to be that big of a problem. Okay, so we are with Lucky Strike. It's a level three. I would have liked to go with Compact, but it's not going to happen. So instead, we're going to target Marlboro, West, or Lucky Strike again. As for engine, no one is using Ferrari or Mercedes power units. The, 20, the, 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 the Turbo Hybrid era has traumatized me. Mercedes or Ferrari engines. They are engines in this time of, of, of Formula 1. If this were any other playthrough, I will immediately jump towards Ferrari or Mercedes. But as you should know, Ferrari is very, very Italian. And Mercedes is very, very German. So we cannot do that. So we're going to be sticking with Renault because French. Actually, where's everyone? McLaren went with Cosworth, Ferrari went with Honda. And it's a Honda partner deal too, what are you doing Ferrari? At least McLaren secured a, a works deal with Cosworth. <sighs> Grand Prix world, man. Anyway, um, we're competing with Sauber and pretty much everyone else to get this, the Renault partner deal. What a partner deal does I'm pretty sure I have explained this like 16 times per episode in the previous episode, but I will do it again. You can remap the engine. So that very low power, that, that low power the Renault engine has by default, we could take rating for, say, from say response, reliability, heat, to put them on power and therefore get a much, much powerful engine. So we could like take all of these reliability points, put them on power and therefore get a very good uh, qualifying engine. But we cannot do that right now because we're just a customer. We will, will, we will be fighting with other teams to get this partner deal, but I'm pretty sure they will be trying to get the the Cosworth deals signed first, and then Honda and BMW, or perhaps Ferrari or Mercedes. Maybe, just maybe. We're gonna see the the the, the engine specifications themselves in a moment. Tires. Just four Bridgestone teams, McLaren, VAR, Jordan, and Minardi. Very, very 2005-ish, only with four teams instead of three. Everyone else here, Michelin, Ferrari and Benetton with the works deal, Williams and Arrows with partner deals, and Prost and Jaguar with customer deals. Tower is not going to be a concern because they have a customer deal already. I'm hoping these guys stay with Bridgestone or people start jumping ship to Bridgestone as well. We're going to level up to, I guess, I could try and go for the works deal. If uh, if I can hurry up and sign that rental deal real quickly, we could go for the mission works deal. But ideally, I wanted to just go to partner deal and then in, in 2004 sign a works deal for 2005. But if Michelin offer a two-year deal, I'm going to go straight into works. Or if they just offer, offer me a partner deal, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a partner deal then. Um, still, we are locked into Elf. We're going to keep signing Elf because, because Elf is French. No other, no other reason than that. Mobile has Ferrari and Arrows. Shell has Jordan and Benetton. Texaco has Williams and VAR. Petrobras has Sauber and Minardi. Mitsub Niseki Mitsubishi has Jaguar and... No one has signed BP because look at those ratings. Elf has Prost and McLaren. And then of course there's the whole bunch of cash sponsors. Look at Acer going to McLaren, the traders. Um, we'll sign 555, five, five. but anyway, time to get into the portal stuff. So, <laughs> Mar Marlboro Jordan, um, Marlboro, Jordan, Honda. Okay, that doesn't. It's not that senseless because Jordan Honda was a thing. But West Ferrari, Cosworth. <laughs> the names, I love them. Anyway, um, again, we're gonna try to steal Marlboro or West from their respective teams. And if that doesn't work, then we just get Lucky Strike again, because Lucky Strike, they may end up pretty happy with what we do. Now, the engines. Ferrari de developed the most powerful engine in Formula 1 that no one is using. 
it basically has no failing. It like has the same weight, weight rating as all Reynolds. Look at that. It's the same weight rating. Why no one has signed Ferrari engines? Not even Ferrari. I love this game for that reason. Because you just get this kind of random stuff. With an out of F1 developer building an amazing engine. And no one using it. Including us. Because we're Reynolds. Well, we're basically going to be Prost Reynolds. We're going to be uh, France's national team teamed up with Reynolds. Only Reynolds could build works engines, but whatever. Mercedes built a not that reliable engine, so that's their failing. Otherwise, they're pretty solid. They're very light, too. So, BMW beats us in power, as expected. We beat them in reliability and rigidity and heat. Honda beats us in response, but we beat them in reliability and pretty much every other rating, Not that's not power. And Cosworth is extremely light, but even they beat us in power, Jesus Christ. VAR and Benetton look like they will be a threat because of this power rate because of the power rating. It's pretty high. That's gonna boost their car a lot. Uh, Cosworth, I hate the fact that they are very fuel efficient, same with BMW. Because that means they will be able to carry less fuel and be faster in the opening stints. Not good for us. So there's that. Reliability is mid overall. Us, we have very good reliability. Again, thankfully no one's using Ferrari engines because look at that power. Now, who is winning the tire war? Probably Bridgestone. It is indeed Bridgestone. <laughs> Pretty much maxed out resilience on every tire, absurdly gripping soft tire. I won Bridgestone tires for their Japanese. <sighs> where do we beat? Where does Michelin beat Bridgestone? In their wet weather tire? Not quite because of the of the stiffness. The Bridgestone wet weather is stiffer. But ours has better temperature rating, so there's something. Uh, we beat them in the intermediate tire at 7 temperature, but it's just one point. They hand us our ass in the soft tire department. So look at that difference. Three points and like four points in resilience. We do have one more point in in stiffness and one more and but we lose one more point in temperature. And it's pretty even in the in the hard tire. Lose one point of temperature, lose one point in grip. The positive, uh, the positive is that I'm pretty sure the AI does not use soft tires. So, those Bridgestone runners, the three Bridgestone runners, McLaren, BAR, BAR, Jordan, and Minardi, they will not be able to use this soft tire because they are, their AI is very stupid. But we will not be able to use the soft tire to their full potential because it is just four points of resilience. We could possibly run a one-stop strategy here in Australia, except we cannot because the soft tire is just horrible. It's just horrible. Anyway, morale did not change that much. Let me just install the um, the driver aids right away. And well, we're back in Australia. It is round one of the 2003 season, but as you know, this is just a 2003 build-up. The way things will, the way I think things will go, will not be in this order, of course. I'm pretty sure the order. If I could just see the teams. I'm pretty sure the top teams will be Ferrari, of course, McLaren, and Williams. I think, or at least I hope, that Benetton and Sauber cooled off. And they are fighting with us in the midfield, at least to start the year. Arrows, Jaguar, and Jordan, and Minardi won't be that big of a factor. VAR might be. Of course, this is just me hoping that things go to plan, but usually things don't go to plan for me. So to know how the order will turn out, how the 
performance at the start of the year will be, I will have to turn to uh, my good old spreadsheet that generates the, the, the pretty charts that you have been seeing throughout the blog post. And I don't really upload any in these videos. Maybe I should. But yeah. Um, so yeah, let's go to the Excel. See who is actually going to be the better team in in the rare case that Prost is actually the best team in Formula 1, we can start thinking about Fer Fernando Alonso world champion. Oh yeah, one more thing. Thanks to B-Dub, which is who is the basically the god of Grand Prix World modding, because he made the utility Grand Prix World edit, which means we have all these cool mods like 2001 World Grand, uh, Grand Prix World. I have updated my Grand Prix World version. Thank you, phone. Thank you, absolutely. I totally forgot to shut you off, uh, to keep you quiet. Um, thanks to Grand Prix World Edit, I have made the point system go from the usual top six, top six, uh, top six 10 to 1, go to top eight, uh, top eight, 10 to 1. So we're going to be seeing the, the, the 2003 to 2009, 10, 8, 6, 4, 3 to 1, which, yeah. Just so you don't get surprised that, oh, wow, there are now a, a guys that score eight points. That can happen. If you modify Grand Prix World, yeah, it can happen. Anyway, time to go on to the Excel. So, welcome to my little beloved Excel, where I keep track of everything that happens in regards to car performance and lineups and stuff like that. So, uh, as you can say, it is in Spanish because Venezuela. Hi, hola. Uh, anyway, so what happened in this? This, yeah, this is right. This is right. Uh, I was about to panic. So, in the 2002 preseason, here's how the cars looked. As you remember, we were terrible, and we got better until the end of the year, where first we surpassed Jordan, and then we went all the way up to very close to BAR. We did not beat BAR in terms of raw car performance. But in terms of strategy and how operationally capable we were, we beat them that way. Of course, you had this very tight cluster be between McLaren, Benetton, uh, Williams, and Sauber. And that cluster did stay tight. They did close the distance to Ferrari, who all did, did improve a bit throughout the year. But yeah, it, 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 it didn't quite work out, at least for them. Now, what happened in 2003? First, let's go from the bottom to the top. Um, Jaguar has even worse performance than a year before. Like, this is the, the, the Jaguar performance line. It should be all the way over here. It isn't. It is lower. So their performance last year, was, starting out, was 42.57. And right now, it is 41.07. So they lost. Even if it's just a tiny bit, they lost. That in comparison to, say... Minardi, who started with pretty much 4,500, now they are at 4,636. So, slight improvements, but they're definitely better than Jaguar. And they ended up last year considerably better than Jaguar uh, again. Benetton. Benetton finally fell from grace. Wait, Benetton. No, Sauber. F Sauber. <laughs> Sorry. Sauber fin finally fell from grace, I think... I was going to say, I think their car was... Yeah, it was Billy, Willy Ramp. Willy Ramp built their car for 2002. I do not know... Uh, editor, say please. Uh, that guy built the car for them for 2003. And... Yeah. It, 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 it wasn't as good. Same thing with Jordan, basically. Jordan basically lost a ton of performance. Started last year with 6,700, went down to 5,500, basically. It's not as harsh as Sauber, who started with 80, uh, 80 uh, well, started. Started with 8,300, basically, went down to 5,400. Not a deal. So that's a pair of big losers in Jordan and, and Sauber. Here's a winner. Arrows went from... 5,100, uh, 5,163, let's just say the outright value. And now we're starting this year with 6,697. Whatever they did, it definitely worked out in their favor. Next up is us. 
Last year we started with 59.38, went all the way up to 8,000. And now we're starting this year with 69,000, uh, 6,900. Very nice. So yeah, basically won a thousand points in between season, in, in, in the off season compared to the start of the previous year, which is actually pretty good. VAR also got better. No, VAR got a bit worse. They started last year with 76.43. Now they're down to 73.4. 73, Numbers are hard. Uh, let's see. Benetton. Benetton actually stayed there. Started with 82.54. Went down to 7,700. Lost a tiny bit of performance. Lost some performance, but they're still there. Uh, uh, What's the term I want to use? Um, at the top of the midfield, yeah, basically, that's pretty much it. Uh, Williams, Williams is going to be a pretty, uh, a bit hard to get. It's basically the same as Saubert, 8,300, went down to 79.28, so lost a bit of performance, same with Benetton, but they're still at the top of the midfield. So, Prost, us, if we're going to fight anyone, it's going to be these three teams, at least at the beginning of the year. If things work out, we will at the very least overtake VAR and maybe overtake Benetton as well. Possibly Williams if things go right, but I doubt it. Uh, Ferrari lost a bit. It started with 88, uh, 88.45. They are now down to 85.41, so lost a bit of performance. And finally, you have McLaren, the best team in Formula 1 right now. Started with 84.92, went up all the way to 85.86. So just a tiny bit better than Ferrari. Tiny bit better than the previous year, but they are the better team. Now you have to remember that McLaren has, it's pretty much a one-man show. They only have David Coulthard. Weber is there, but Weber's not that good. Whereas Ferrari has DeMichael and Fisichella. So there's always that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you are ready for 2003. Uh, if you saw this art, you can tell me. Who do you think is going to win this championship? If it's going to be Ferrari, it's going to be McLaren. Maybe Williams sneaks in the title. Maybe it's Fisichella this time around. Maybe he manages to, get, to keep it together down the stretch and win it. I don't know. Maybe you say Prost is going to win this championship. I don't know. We're going to find out, we're going to find that out in the next eight episodes. I hope you enjoyed this one. Not much action, plenty managing, but you know what? I'll see you in the next one.